Hello guys, a while back I posted a video about Unity Entity Component System and I've decided to make another small video and show how we could move an entity with the input system and I'm using URP also in the package manager I have installed entities, entities graphics and input system so as you might know, in order to create our entities, we need a subscene. So I can create a new subscene using this option here. And I'm just going to name this subscene and save this. So first I'm going to create an entity. To do that, under the subscene, I create an empty game object. And let's just name it player. So when we play the project, this player game object is going to be converted to entity. So to visualize this, I am going to create a 3D capsule under our player. And let's also remove the capsule collider. I might do a separate video about rigid bodies and colliders using Unity physics. So also I am going to go to the scene and get a better angle of my camera. Now I'm going to align my camera with the view. So back to the player. So to move our player, we need inputs. In order to do that, I'm going to create a new folder and name it input. And inside this, I am going to create a new input actions and name it controls. So if I open this, I can add a new action map. Let's just call it character. And for the action, I am going to create an action, name it move. This is going to be of type value and vector two. So I am going to add a binding up, down, left, right composite. So I am going to use the keyboard keys for the up. I am going to use W for the down. I am going to use S for the left A and for the right. I'm going to use D. So if I save my controls input actions, now I can select my controls and check generate C sharp class and apply the changes. Now that our input is ready, we can go to the script and create a new script and call it inputs data. And if we open the inputs data, we can change it to a I component data by using Unity entities. And instead of mono behavior, we say I component data. And instead of class, we say struct. So also we are going to use Unity mathematics and create a float two for our move input. And now we can go back to the Unity, create another script for character. So if I open the character, we can add using Unity entities. And here I am going to create a character data. It's gonna be component data and it's going to have a float as speed. Also inside our mono behavior, we are going to create the speed. And we can create a baker to attach the component data to our entity, we get a reference to the entity, and then we are going to add our character data and inputs data to the entity. So right now, all we did is we have created two component data. One component data is for character that contains the variables specific to the character. For example, the character's move speed. And we also created another component data, and it is called input data. So input data could be attached to any entity. For example, if you have a vehicle in your game, you could also attach the inputs data to the vehicle, but you're not going to attach the character data to the vehicle. The character data is only for characters. And we have created a character, which is mono behavior. We're going to attach this character to a game object. And then this baker, character baker is going to look for any game object with character mono behavior attached to it. And when he finds one, he is going to override the bake. It is going to add character data and input data to that entity. Also, it's going to set the speed that has been determined on the mono behavior, which is visible in the inspector to that character data speed. So now if we go to the unity editor, select our player and add the character to the player game object. This is a game object. We can now look at the entity baking preview 
and you see our entity now has character data attached to it. Also, if we go to the runtime here, you see that there is a list of components that is attached to this entity, which character data and input data is a part of that. So after that, we're gonna create a system which updates the input here, and then we're gonna create another system which is going to move the character based on the input and the speed. So for the input, let's create a script and name it inputs system. So if we open inputs system, we can use Unity entities and then we can inherit from system base. Also, we are going to use partial keyword and let's implement the abstract class. So we have on update and we also need on create. So we're gonna override those two functions. So for our inputs, we are going to create a reference to the controls. By the way, this is the controls that we have created inside input. That is the controls that we are referencing. So inside the on create, we are going to initialize the controls and enable it. And then inside on update, we are going to do a query. We are going to get the read write reference to any entity that has input data attached to it using system API.query and we named that data. So we're gonna use data dot value read write and move is the variable that we have created inside the inputs data. We are going to assign the value for that variable and we are going to use inputs character move read value vector two. This is the vector two we created inside our control. This is it. This is the WSAD keys of our keyboard. So back to the script. So this system doesn't care if input data is attached to a character, a vehicle, or any other entity. It's just gonna search the world for any entity with inputs data attached to it, and then it's gonna update the value of that component. So if we go back to the editor, and if I select my player, and if I play the game, and let's take a look at the components attached to this entity. So this is the inputs data. Now if I hit the keys on my keyboard, you see that the values inside the inputs data is changing. So to move the character, we can create another system, and I am going to name this one character movement system. Now if we open this script, up here we can use Unity Entities, Mathematics, and Transforms. So we could use either System Base or iSystem, but because I used System Base for the input, let's actually use iSystem for this one. So I'm going to use an update function. Let's also use the partial keyword, and instead of class, use struct. So in order to use character movement system, we're gonna run a query. So I'm going to say for each, and then I get three variables. The first one is data, inputs, and transform. The data is read only value of character data. The inputs also read only for the inputs data. But for the transform, I am going to use read write of the local transform because we want to change the transform of the entity. So basically, this is going to search for any entity that has character data attached to it, input data attached to it, and has a local transform. So to start, I am going to get the transform read only position. So this is the current position of our entity. Then I am going to add the value of our input move x multiplied by data speed multiplied by time dot delta time and i'm going to do the same thing for z using the y value of my move input also multiply that with speed and delta time and then i am going to set the read write position of my entity to the position that we changed i'm sure there is a more elegant way to do this but i'm trying to simplify this as much as possible so if we go back to the Unity editor, and if I play the project one more time, now I can move around my entities using my input. 
So I hope you find this video useful. Also feel free to ask me any questions in the comments or contact me in Discord. And please make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.